Hey gang, and welcome back to Conquering Your Commander. I hope you didn't miss me too much. This week we'll be looking at the queen of political intrigue from Paliano the High City. This is Marchesa the Black Rose. Costing a meager one colorless, one blue, one black, and one red, Marchesa is a three power, three toughness human wizard that's a force to be reckoned with. When she isn't assassinating political interests, she provides her creatures with a new mechanic, Dethrone. Furthermore, she has a second triggered ability that focuses on abusing Dethrone. Dethrone was introduced in the multiplayer draft set Conspiracy. Causing a player to reassess and oftentimes focus on the player with the highest life total, Dethrone reads as such. Whenever this creature attacks the player with the most or tied for the most life, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Although you lack a lot of ways to put counters or move counters on creatures, which you'd find in parries like Simic, Marchesa does a decent job of it herself. Besides, killing an opponent is one of the best ways to win, and from the get-go, it's pretty clear that Marchesa is going to want to swing with your creatures. In this episode, we're going to look at the typical style for Marchesa, which plays more as a Grixis aggro or Grixis good stuff, but I feel like there's enough content to do a later video on Marchesa, in fact. We'll come back to that another time, though. Now that we know what she does, what she wants to do, and how she does it, let's look at some cards to help us get there. So we're going to start off strong with these next three creatures who I'll be introducing as a group. It's an interesting combo, and one that isn't always the easiest to assemble, but it can win you games outright. Like some of the most broken things in EDH, this combo is prominently built around Necrotic Ooze. Essentially, what you need to do is have Ooze on the field with a haste enabler, and then use Buried Alive to place Kiki Jiki, Grim Grin, and Sage of Hours into your graveyard. First, you'll use Ooze to make a copy of itself using Kiki Jiki's ability. Next, we sacrifice the copy to the original using Grimgrin's ability to untap himself and give himself a counter. We then do this a million times and take off all those counters to take infinite turns with Sage of Hours ability. It's a little convoluted and can take a lot of setup, but it's a really fun way to win. Machaeus the Unhallowed is also a great card to run in the deck, as he provides creatures, assuming they aren't human, one of the easiest ways to get counters placed on them, by killing them. Marchesa wants to attack and get the counters on her creatures, but she also wants them to die so you can get repeated enter the battlefield effects or activated abilities. McCase is here to help us to that end. Sage of Fables provides a lot of our most important creatures with plus one plus one counters as soon as they hit the field. She also doubles as a source of reusable card draw and a way to remove counters if Marchesa is not out, but McCaeus is. Glenelenja Archmage works well in tandem with Sage of Fables. She can basically act as a source of unlimited non-creature spell counters, provided you have blue mana to pay for her ability, as when she comes back with Persist, she also gets the plus one plus one counter from the Sage of Fables. This essentially negates both of them, causing her to revert back to her natural state. Lastly, Treasonous Ogre was introduced into Conspiracy, and his ability to pay life for mana can help us lower our life total if we become the highest. This is an important role in any Marchesa deck, as we never want to have the highest life total at the table. Marchesa is going to be running a heavier than usual creature base, as her abilities are so focused on them. This doesn't mean she doesn't have space for other spells, but we have to make sure that they're great. Sneak Attack is everything we could possibly want and more. It allows us to cheat out enormous creatures for nearly no investment, it provides them haste so they can swing and get Dethrone Trigger, and then sacrifices them at the end of turn, and we get a second ETB from when they come back with Dethrone. Unspeakable Symbol, although created way back in Scourge, is pretty much the ultimate enchantment for Marchesa. It allows us to pay three of our life to give plus one plus one counters to our creatures. It really doesn't get much better than that for this deck. Grave Betrayal is a fantastic enchantment provided you aren't in a super fast meta. It allows us to steal our opponent's creatures, but then keep them permanently when they die a second time, as Marchesa's ability doesn't care which graveyard a creature goes to, so long as you were controlling it when it died. The Signets are obviously great in Marchesa. They allow us to ramp without green, but I also tend to run the two Talismans, Dominance and Indulgence, as they come out on the same turn and can be used to ramp us, as well as control our life. They work similarly to the Painlands, which I would also recommend including. You're going to also want to consider running a few of the Altars. But things like Culling Dice and Spawning Pit work well on the spot as well. Spawning Pit is one of my favorites, since most of the time the creature comes back, and then we have counters on it to get more token creatures for later on. Grixis as a color combination can often struggle with enchantments, so you'll want to run a few catch-alls, like counter spells, to make sure they don't get out of hand. Additionally, Chaos Warp is a great addition if something does land, and it helps us deal with it in a way that they can't get it back. 
I would also strongly consider Croesus's Charm and any other selective mode cards, as they are too versatile to pass up. Yes, their cost is restrictive, but it's often better than just having that dead Doomblade in your hand. Living End and Living Death can win you games. We run a very heavy creature deck, and depending on your build, you can reliably dump more creatures than anything else but the most dedicated graveyard decks. As such, getting them all back and taking away all the field is a huge boon for us. Blasphemous Act and Chain Reaction are great board wipes normally, but they become doubly good when most of our creatures come back at the end of turn anyway. Mark of Mutiny is a fun pet card. Like I mentioned earlier, if we control an opponent's creature when it dies with a 1-1 counter on it, Marchidus doesn't care what graveyard it goes to. The creature comes back to us at the end of turn. Naturally, we could always play Steel Spells and then attack with them, but Mark of Mutiny can completely bypass the need to attack for only 3 mana. I didn't actually run any Planeswalkers when I built this deck, but I could see the typical blue and black walkers like Tezzeret the Seeker and Liliana Vess making their way into the deck. The new Obnixilus could also fit here, as he's another way to control your life, but with the added bonus of drawing you a card to do so. Well gang, those are my suggestions on how to make an interesting Marchesa deck. I may do a follow up to this video with the Infect build, but that'll be at a later date. As always, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and opinions, and thank you for watching, and be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.